The water main broke just before 9 o'clock this morning. Crew members from Cheyenne Board of Public Utilities were working on the corner of Pershing and Henderson for two hours before they finally got the water to shut off. But in that time, an entire neighborhood of houses has been flooded. I could hear the water coming into the basement. Lila Randolph has only been living in her home for four years. This is the second time she's had to pump nearly three inches of mud, water, and rock out of a destroyed basement, all due to a water main break less than a block away. It's devastating to have your property ruined uh, through no fault of my own. I just live here. Uh, we're, we're not completely sure what will what happened to the main until we're able to get in and dig it up and see what happened. In July of 2008, the same water main broke, flooding the same houses on the entire street. And we had to have the carpets ripped up. It was a total mess. The city never found the cause of the 08 water main break and took four months to pay for all of the damages to Rudolph's home. Uh, it took them until about the first part of December to settle with me. One year later, and her nightmare is starting all over again. And I hope I don't have to go through what I did two years ago with the city. City officials are sending over paperwork for Rudolph to file yet another claim, but won't tell her whether or not this is the last time she'll have to do it. They said it wasn't their fault, but it wasn't my fault either. And this wasn't my fault. It wasn't like I had a busted pipe or anything. Representatives from the Board of Public Utilities say they're a long way off from finding the cause and a solution to the recurring problem. Our efforts right now have been to restore water service um, to repair the pipe in the meantime. Cheyenne City Planner Scott Smith says the water break could have happened a long time ago with pressure building up for months. Businesses and homes in the area do have water again and Board of Public Utilities crews will begin excavating for the water main tomorrow in search of the cause of the break. Reporting live, Katherine Johnson, CBS News Channel 5. It's a parent's worst nightmare. They believe their child is safe and sound at home after school when there's actually a stranger rifling through all of their personal belongings. Thanks to one smart local teen, that stranger is no longer a threat to the community. Monday afternoon, Michael Boyce came home to what seemed like a normal environment. His father called to make sure he was home okay, and after he hung up, he went to check on his favorite pet. That's when he noticed out of place items and disheveled rooms throughout the house. Then I go down the hall and I see a guy going through my parents' room. Michael was in shock when he saw a complete stranger sifting through his mother's jewelry. He was walking like right in the middle of the doorway with his back turned to me, so he would have just had to turn a turn and he would have saw me. But 55 year old Floyd Blackburn didn't turn. Michael was able to run to a phone and call 911. They were very responsive. They were here within three minutes and 40 seconds of the 911 calls. But to Michael, yeah. it felt like an eternity. I was thinking of, oh my God, is this guy going to find me? Did he, did he like hurt any of the animals that we have here? Police arrested Blackburn as he was leaving the house. He was armed with a hatchet and stolen knives from the residence, carrying two full bags of jewelry out the front door. You don't think it's going to happen to you? Kevin Boyce says the family is still shaken. The robber entered the house in pure daylight, breaking in through the front door. I'm still kind of nervous about the whole deal, and, and no, one, no one wants uh, someone to invade your privacy uh, or your home that you don't know in that, in that manner, and uh, that's pretty upsetting. But had it not been for Michael, the boy's family would have become another victim on Blackburn's long list of previous hits. Don't underestimate your kids. Uh, they do know what trouble is and when, what trouble is when they see it. The boy's family lives on a one-way street with the front door hidden from traffic, making it difficult for drivers to see the robber break the glass and enter. The investigation is ongoing and will bring you Blackburn's charges once they're filed. Reporting live, Katherine Johnson, CBS News Channel 5. It was, you know, unexpected call, obviously. After 53 days, you kind of lose hope. Bruce Schneeber was filling up his rig when his cat, Millie, jumped from the semi. As we were driving across the parking lot to another pump, she bailed out of the back window. Millie was lost and wandered the area during Wyoming's harshest October weather in history. And at that time, we saw just her back paw move just a little bit. And I said, oh my gosh, she's alive. 
Scott Alexander and his family found Millie while waiting for the roads to reopen last Friday. She was buried in snow on the side of the road and weighed just five pounds. Her body felt like an ice cube, nothing worked. Alexander used to work animal rescue for the San Diego Humane Society and says he's never seen an animal fight so hard. I didn't think she would make it. After warming her up for seven hours, Millie gave the Alexanders hope. Her heart started beating just a little faster. When she started to wake up, she was blind. She couldn't see, she would bang into things, she couldn't walk, she was very uncoordinated. But as you can see now, no. she's back. She was in good hands. After getting in touch with her owners, the Alexanders rerouted their truck to meet Millie's family in Cheyenne. Millie, Millie, oh, Millie, hi. How are you doing, honey? Schneeber left New Mexico the first chance he could. We're uh, complete now. And thanks to good care, Millie is already gaining her weight back. She's a tough cookie. But it'll take a little more time for her to completely get back on her feet. You're safe now.